James, we're going to the back of this off a very rare defeat, end of the winning run of 11 games. What's been the response kind of like since? Um, incredible, actually. Uh, there's an interesting story behind this. Um, spoke to the lads on, on the weekend and said that if, if you're going to show you're a good team, then your reaction is the most important thing. And there's a lot of context behind the defeat. Um, it's, it's not just the fact that we lost the game. There, there was there were some other factors in it. But I had, a, I had a meeting Monday afternoon when we were due to train. That overrun by 20 minutes, the boys knew what the session was. And I, I left the meeting 20 minutes late for training to come out and I can hear a lot of, a lot of shouting outside and I'm, I'm getting ready thinking, oh, they're messing around, they're not switched on. I come out and they've set up the first practice, they're, they're leading it completely themselves. And if I'm honest, I, 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 I've enjoyed the performances and the results as much as anyone, but that is as... That's as proud as I've been of them this season, just to see them leading themselves a great reaction after their first defeat, showing that they're a team and that they're learning and they're able to, to take control. So, yeah, their, their reaction's been fantastic and probably better than I would have expected. Well, I think that's where we've got to bring Paris in. Paris, what happened? Tell us about it. Well, we saw that like James's meeting was like kind of overrunning for the session. We wanted to get like, like a full session because we felt really bad after our first loss, obviously. So we just wanted to get the like, maximum opportunity to despair ourselves. So yeah, we just started the session and waited for it to come. But also, you're one of the characters of the team as well. There's a few others around too. Did you have to do much lifting of them, or the boys just it's just such a good mentality amongst you all? Yeah, everyone was on the same wavelength, so we all just got stuck in. James, in terms of how we left it the last time, I think when we played Woking. 7-0 of course, um, you said there was a little bit of room for improvement, then of course we played Sutton, has it been busy for you in terms of coaching and trying to have to sort of bring them along or as you said does that just help so much? Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty self-managing in, in that respect and they've got their standards that they're, they're very aware of. Um, it wasn't Woking and then Sutton, we've, we've had a few games in between in which we've won, won two or three in that period, um, some really tough games, Luton and, and Southend who are both doing well in our league as well. Um, so no, yeah, that we we've worked on the areas that we felt we need to improve at, um, and a couple of the goals against Luton was was everything that we were asking for. The scoreline might not be emphatic, as emphatic, but the performance was was very good as well against a, a very strong opposition. So look, the focus is of course now the, the next round against Charlton Athletic. They've been in decent form to themselves this season. Tell us about what kind of opposition we're up against, where they are, where they figure in sort of like the youth structure in comparison to us. Uh, so they're a Category 2 academy, um, but we're a Category 3, so they're, they're a, a higher category. A lot of that comes down to sort of facilities and, and, and how much you're, you're investing within your structure. Um, they're top of their league at the moment. They've got an excellent track record. We, we know some of the coaches down there um, that have, we've, we've gone and observed with and, and uh, played, over, played over numerous years. So they're, they're an excellent academy, they've got an excellent staff instruction, they'll have some excellent players as well, so we know that the challenge is going to be really difficult, um, but we don't go into any game thinking that we are not capable of matching, pe matching teams or, or putting in a performance that, that warrants being in a Wimbledon shirt. As this man did, uh, of course, uh, last season for against Burnley, but tell us Paris, I mean, how did you keep your feet on the ground after that one, because there was a lot of attention, yeah? Oh. I didn't look much into it because it's just one goal, anyone could have scored it. I wasn't on the pitch from that long, so I just thought, I just scored to be honest. Yeah, so I had to score the goal, I'm going to tackle, that's what I did. But then all of a sudden, sort of, you go on social media, you see the reaction about you know, what you've done there, and was it, did it kind of hit you a little bit then? Yeah, it's nice to see like, a lot of praise and like, good words from fans and everything, but. It's like the game's gone and we have to focus on the next one. But just going back to that time in your life as well, because I mean you were studying for exams as well in the lead up to that for that summer, weren't you? So it's a stressful time. How do you, how do you get through that? Well, what I'd like to say I did was I multitasked well, but I, I, my head was more with football than education, I, I can't lie. So I'd go into football and then I'd do my education after, but I'd make sure I did my education to the best of my ability. Yeah, how important is that? Of course, I mean, you know, at the moment it's about wanting to be a f footballer for AFC Wimbledon, but yeah. you, you're kind of planning ahead, yeah, you're looking ahead to, to life. Yeah, like, I need a plan B and I need grades to do that, so, yeah. But where you are at the moment in life as well, I mean, what are your strengths with, with your game at the moment? Um, I'd like to say I'm an attacking player, um, exciting 1v1s, 
and I got a good press. So defensively, I got a good standing as well. So yeah, that's my main attributes. That's it. And the thoughts, of course, on the last round against Woking, because I mean, we you know come up with a very impressive scoreline. But mm. as James said, you know, there's perhaps areas we could have still worked upon. Yeah. Yeah. The first 15 minutes we were a bit shaky, couldn't really get our foot on the ball. But I think Q's goal really settled us down, and we started to get more goals out of it from like Morgan, Marcel, and myself. So yeah. James, in terms of where we're at at the moment in the season, of course, we've just celebrated a year ago since we won the Youth Alliance Cup. Um, we're still in that competition as well. A number of these players could be involved in the London Senior Cup. So there's a lot going on, but I suppose your main priority still is, of course, you know, developing players for the first team, isn't it? 100%, and that, that is always the focus. As much as we love winning, winning can't be at the detriment of their development and their progression. Um, actually, the semi-final, um, I'm not sure how many people will be aware, but the semi-final is Saturday morning. So we'll be playing Charlton Friday night and the semi-final Saturday morning at home to Exeter. So you've still got to go through so we've that got game. To play, yeah, two games in probably about 14, 15 hours. So, wow. Um, the boys have really bought into it. It's not something that they haven't done before. We did it. We do it a lot within our youth development program. It's about creating spikes to uh, develop a resilient and robust player. Um, ultimately, what Wimbledon is founded on, and, and what first team coaches will want uh, in the future is players that are able to play. Saturday go again Tuesday to develop that ability to be mentally and physically robust and resilient. They need to have them spikes in their development program. So in an ideal situation, we maybe wouldn't be playing Friday Saturday with two such big games, but on a with, with that comes a another opportunity to to develop a different area of our of our program. Um, and the, the credit has to go to sort of Jenna Richards, Liam Liam Connor, and. Also, Chris um, we're from from the first team because their their understanding, their education for the players in terms of how they recover and how they prepare has been absolutely absolutely instrumental for them to be ready to, to be able to do that. It's such an important part of the season. But that's incredibly demanding, though. That's two games in tw less than twenty four hours. I mean, how are you going to cope with that, really? I mean, I know you're saying there's great efforts going on behind the scenes. I'm not. They they are. Um, they're going, to, they're going to be the ones that are going to cope. We're, we're not going to play um, necessarily the exact same side. There will be some changes, but the boys are, all of them have come and knocked on, on my door and said that they want to be involved in both. So we'll have to make a decision as to how that looks. We've got, Like I said, we've got an excellent under-16 side and hopefully people have seen that with some of the, the results that the 16s have had this season and some of the boys that have stepped up. Um, so they'll be in and around the squad as well. Um, but yeah, this this is this is part of of them their their development. Is 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 it ideal? Probably not. Is it something that we can embrace and they can develop from? One hundred percent. So we're, yeah, we're excited about it. As somebody who's got to go through it, Paris, tell us about it. What's what's your reaction? Two games in less than twenty four hours, possibly. Well, at first, it was quite shocking. It weren't. I couldn't really process it because I was thinking it'll be like like later on. But when I heard it was probably going to be a morning game and the, the night before as well. And I lived quite far. It was it was hard to get round first day, but after that, we just felt like nothing I can do about it. So I just have to adapt. Yeah, I mean it's just sort of you know something you buy into, and you know it's part of a group mentality. Yeah, you just want to yeah. win, yeah. You just want to win, but we also want to do well to win. So we don't want a good like we want a good performance with the win, basically. Just finally for yourself as well, though. Of course, I mean with with Quayne Bartley, Morgan Williams, the rest of the group too. How much do you draw inspiration from the likes of, of Dylan and Isaac and Kwaku who've gone on to earn their first pro deals mm -hmm. and what Mark Robinson is trying to achieve here? Well, like, like to put it straight, that's where I want to be, a lot of the lads like below them want to be. So we look up to them in that sense of what they do to be in their position. So it's just a learning mindset, a growth mindset to see what we can take from them to get better ourselves. And with Robbo, Robbo Great manager, puts a lot of faith in the like the young youth setup, which not many clubs do. So yeah, I like it. It's very nice. It's good to hear. That's that's Paris Lock and James Oliver Pierce. The big game, of course, tomorrow night starts with the uh, Chart Athletic, and then they've got another semi-final, of course, on Saturday morning against Exeter. Chaps, very good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you.